Scott here, Sydney Motorsports Park. We're driving in. Uh, this facility is really cool. Boom. We're here. There's some people on track right now. So we're gonna, I think, check it out and then try to find our car. Just coming in here, you, there's so much elevation in the track, you don't really notice on TV. Uh, yeah, Mike nice Motorsports and the rest of the homies. How'd you pick this up so fast, dude? I'm a man on a mission. <laughs> It's a, guy, it's a guy I tricked into coming to World Time Tech. Tricked? Jokes on you. <laughs> <laughs> we are just with this guy at the airport like less than an hour ago. And he's, he's got wheels on a trailer already. Oh. Well, should we put our... It's going to be out of here. Oh, it's been a minute since we've seen her, boys. But she made it safe and sound. Everything looks all right in here. We do have quite a bit of work to do. We still got to do the heat management on the flat floor, so that has to come back off. And then just prep. Prep to get ready for on track on Thursday, which will be our first time on track. Basically just open practice, go through some totes, make sure everything's still in there that we need. Since there's a bunch of last minute shit that happened right before this thing had to get shipped out. Bunch of cool cars in here already though. Wildly insane aero package on an S13. We pumped to see this thing run. All right, More pallets, wheels, totes, everything's here, splitter. <laughs> He's clipped to the bumper now? Yeah. Oh, cool. In front of the bumper. So, That's nice. Yeah, it's way nicer. Dude. Yeah, because it Super locks nice. it in instead of relying all yeah. on these. All right, second things first. List. A little list. <laughs> Real simple list so far. Yeah, I'll show it to you in a second when that shit's like fucking three pages long. <laughs> this is our thermal barrier. This didn't show up in time at Victor's when he was finished with the flat floor, so we're going to have to pull it back off and put this on now. You need a thermal barrier between the flat floor and any heated area like the headers so the headers are a little too close for comfort and if that carbon lights up you're pretty much gonna light the rest of it up so this is just adhesive backed i think like quarter inch thick and feels pretty legit get that on there tomorrow put it on the list <laughs> got all our stuff down here time to get to work fitness garage are actually pretty cool we're not gonna be working out of here all weekend but prepping a car out of here all day tomorrow. Today we're just kind of getting everything staged and ready to go. Probably gonna get up mega early tomorrow and get here and uh, we got a lot to do. How many times do you say that? A lot. <laughs> Biddy's gonna do it all. We got a lot. <laughs> Shipment. He's pretty sick. We burn all this fuel, but I think we only need like 30 gallons. Pop, 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 pop it up. This little pump. Pop it up. I switched hands. Now I'm doing reverse grip. I'm all the way in and over here. Alright, you ready? Yep. Good morning, everybody. It is day two on the ground here in Australia. Got a decent night's sleep last night. Woke up at 2 a.m., that was sick, and uh, managed to, I think, sleep for probably another hour later on. Got a lot of work to do in the Supra. Got to nut and bolt everything and go through the regular checklist and get this thing fully prepped, which is gonna take probably most of the day. So let's get to it. We're trying a different tire to get more front grip into the car. We kind of guessed when we we went with the front first set of tires, right? Yeah. yeah. And they, they turned out to be a little small. What we're doing here is we're going to reset the bump travel in the car because we need to limit how far up the tire can go into the chassis so that it doesn't get into contact with the hood or with the, um, the pinch weld here. Yep. We're going to have to add the packers to the bump stops. Right. You limit the up travel and then we're going to go up on spring rate because of the new era. So we're going to hit 18Ks? We were 16s. From, from 16s? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully we'll have some more fun there. That's, that's what we're adjusting right now. Well, I think that's gonna be pretty good. close, dude. Looks good though. Yeah, we got a few millimeters still. Oh yeah, cool. We're we're getting nice. some, some drag there. Nice. Gotta have the like bent thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Lock the height in. I always use the spanners. I never hit it with a screwdriver. Ever. We're Zachless, so you guys are getting the Turk vlog, the official Turk vlog. I'm, gonna do, I'm doing my best, guys. I hope you're enjoying it so far. It's not like we've done any driving yet or anything super exciting, but Ian, the promoter of World Time Attack, is a uh, super cool dude. He's been a hoot to freaking hang out with. The dude is a funny f 
guy. A couple beers with him last night at dinner. He's a good, good guy to work with and uh, to have as a friend for sure. Knows everybody in Australia that has to do with motorsports. He's helped us big time trying to figure out a couple simple things, you know, like getting getting the, the correct VP racing fuel, the MS-109 we run on this thing. Getting tires changed when we need them and a bunch of tools that I neglected to put in the tool bag. So yeah, it's been good so far. And, you know, I haven't even gone on track yet. Australia, mate. Australia! Well, I just smoked our engine heater, but this gentleman right here, the heater is from Australia. It's called P1. Do you have one in stock? Yeah. So thanks for saving our ass today. Thank you, man. <laughs> kind of bleeding the new heater, and then we will get this thing warmed up, fire it up for a uh, heat cycle tonight. Make sure we're all set for tomorrow. All right, heater is kicking. Lots of lots coming quick. Feeling good. It is already almost done. That's looking good. Just got the battery hooked up, put the kill switch in. We're gonna see where we're at. Nice. Yeah, it's gotta go. I'll cut the All right. Yeah, we got boys? Yeah. All right, we're gonna do a heat cycle on this bad boy. Make sure everything's good. Biddy's got the laptop going, putting the headsets on so we can talk. <laughs> has started and I'm tired of working and I want to get it on the ground. How's that? That's grumpy Brian. It's been a long day. Yeah. We've been here since 7 and it is now like 6 p.m. All right, we're gonna get it on the ground and pretty much ready to rock for tomorrow. We just need a check toe, get the front splitter on. That's it, boys. I'm pumped. Fire up was good. Sounds good. Temps are good. Fucking ready to rip. <laughs> All right, guys, quick intro, day three. America is here. Yee! We got Jared. Larry Chen's here. We have Biddies. He's still here. Mike Burroughs just went out with his hay swap powered Ferrari. We are pretty much prepped up and ready to rock going on at 11 o'clock. We're going to go have some fun, finally. Arrow like that is literally all over the place in the pit. It's so insane and cool. It's something that we're gonna strive for for the uh, Formula Supra in the future. Everybody's got some really, really, really nice aero packages here, which is one of the biggest things I wanted to come here and see, is just how crazy these cars actually are, and it's pretty cool, man. Bucket list type of event, for sure. Freshies! This is where I smash the caliper. <laughs>
up day, first session, car was ripping and felt awesome. This track definitely takes some balls to drive fast. Turn one, my fastest was like 161 miles an hour, which is slow compared to these other cars, but felt insane. A rear shock is too soft, so we're going up in spring rate for that. Electrical issue at the end of the session where the whole car just turned off, so I think we overheated something. The alternator belt freaking blew off, so that could have also contributed to that. Vinny's <laughs> just jamming as fast as he can. Floor's back off. There's just the two of us here, so it's just a lot of work, and we're doing our best, and we got a session coming up here, so we'll see if we make it. If not, we'll have to just wait for our last session in a day. Sucks, this is the type of shit you go through at the track sometimes. We'll get it on one way or the other. Making sure the GoPro mounts are tight. You're mounting GoPros down there? Yeah. <laughs> as long as you're not mounting them, we're good. <laughs> Just think about it, one sec. Tight. Terminals are tight. Belt's tight. Tensioner's tight. That's gotta be what it is.
about the session. We finally had a freaking amazing session on track. Yeah, it was a long day, a lot of hard work. Big thanks to Tanner coming in and helping us out. Biddies and I were struggling a little bit there. Tired as hell, still jet lag, but um, I got a little checklist to do tomorrow and we'll get our transponder on I kind of, and then tomorrow we'll finally be able to see what kind of times we're running. We didn't even stop watch anything and they didn't have timing set up today. So driving this thing is just like nothing else that I've experienced in my life besides the last time I got the driver, which is over a year ago at this point. So this track is ballsy to drive fast. Turn one, not like I can do it flat. Driving through there at uh, over 160 miles an hour. Turning in in like six gear just felt freaking crazy. So good end to the day. We're gonna watch the boys do some drifting tonight, have a couple drinks and enjoy the festivities this evening. to the transmission. Sounds good. Stoked to see this thing shred today. Stump G bottom mint. Is it? How much power? Yeah. Uh, it's making just under 800 horsepower. 800 on a stump G yeah. bottom. Holy yeah. With shit. With about 200,000 Ks on it. What? Yeah. Yeah, we, we couldn't get the built engine in in time, so we just slapped an NA bottom end in it. Yeah. Just do what you gotta do. Yeah, that's well, it, it's still, yeah. it still looks clean in there, dude. Yeah, Very clean. All right, boys. Day four. <laughs> Betty's got, he's laughing, has a smile on his face, so you know that's good. We got our timing beacon on the car, so we'll see what kind of lap time we can do. Betty's actually got the MoTeC to tell us what our lap time was yesterday. Our best was like a 134, and I think that's actually pretty good. I was told like a Porsche GT3 Cup car is like a 137. It's a good benchmark for this car based on the power and aero package that we have. So that we're faster than that is already good. And then I know I can clean up a ton of stuff on track, go deeper into the braking zones and carry more momentum around quite a few different turns as we get more comfortable. So hopefully keep shaving off some times. And uh, I don't know if we're gonna shave off four seconds, but that'd be pretty sick and get to those 130s. Maybe that's a goal, maybe not. <laughs> we'll find out here today and tomorrow. Yo, why is this not racing? Look at the transaxle. Yo. Oh, it's so hard to see. Sorry guys, trying to show you the transaxle in there. Inboard suspension. Damn. Oh. AE86, so proper. What's up? Good morning. What's happening, dude? How are you? Good morning. Look at me, my organized nut mess. Just, <laughs> just um, you know, just swinging it, slapping things together. Hey, making... there's barely anybody here yet. Hey, Don't we're bringing, we're it. making, <laughs> creating dreams in some fashion. Hey, give me, give me a quick. I know we talked about it last night. Yeah, give man. Give me the quick history on this. Dude, uh, amazing one. history. This car used to be a drift car well back in the day. Won numerous national titles. A lot of street stuff too. Um, and now turned into a time attack car driven by Suchia, who I think we both fell in love with. with option DVD back in the day. Uh, 3 SGE beams engine, not crazy power, about 320 kilowatts. I think last time it ran here at Eastern Creek around a 134, which for the limited error on the car 134? is 134. That's what we ran. I mean, crazy we go faster, dude. <laughs> Hugely <laughs> impressive. 225 tire on the front in a 16, and I think it's got a 265 on the rear, so in a 17 inch tire. So it's staggered, attractive, uh, sequential, and obviously Mtron ECU full Mtron package through the car. And, Man, it's, it's a work of art. I have never seen a car built as well as this thing. And to look at it now, it's a show car, but somehow, you know, it's still literally a, a tractor-driven beast. Yeah, this is Alan, dude. This is the, dude, you're the dude. No, you're the you dude. Made a, you made you're our the dude. life so much easier coming here and helping us sort all the old man. bullshit that we needed. So. Man, I'm just happy to have you here, man. Wait, man, uh, whatever we can do to help, yep. you're the celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, the Z-class celebrity. Hey man, we got some A-classes here too, don't worry about that. But it, it just ain't us, right? Yes. <laughs>
good is that car? What an amazing build. And um, again, it's just one of those things you're going to be treated to more than once uh, over the next couple of days here at World Time Attack. And good morning, Charlie. And uh, what a first gig when you get to talk to Ryan. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, gents. Well, I have kicked off really well, haven't I? Ryan, I don't know whether to say congratulations or just a massive thank you. We were a part of history watching you take the Formula Supra around Sydney Motorsport Park. Just what is going through your mind right now? Uh, just trying to turn the best lap time we can and come back and uh, you know we're, we're competing against ourselves this weekend but we still want to do what we can to learn this car better and um, just see what we can do to make it faster out there and that's kind of where our focus is and to put on uh, some great sounds for everybody out here that came to visit. <laughs> Absolutely. We had rounds of applause as you got out of the car, which is always a really a nice <laughs> feeling. We yeah. saw you cheering even as you pulled into pit lane, but we've heard it, we've seen it, but take us behind the wheel. What is it like to spin around here? Uh, it's This is the fastest track that I've ever driven as far as a, um, a grip racing, road racing situation, and it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, some big turns, uh, plenty of technical stuff going on out there, and I'm still learning uh, grip driving in general, let alone the racetrack itself, so I'm having a blast, and it's, it's just the front straight when you come around on that on a downhill and you grab six gear and hold it flat for a while. There's nothing else like it. <laughs> oh, it's music to your ears, isn't it? And we are just in the very beginning of the World Time Attack event, and what a great way to start. So, Ryan, again, congratulations to you, yourself, the team. We are so thankful to have you. Well, thank you. I'm a uh, pleasure to be here. This is a bucket list event for me to come to, and I'm happy I could bring the Formula Super with us. All right, we just did our first session. Wasn't really able to go faster than last night. There's a lot of oil down, a lot of kitty litter on the track, so it's a little dirty. And then uh, we had a wicked vibration starting and some of the himes on the rear suspension came loose so we're just uh, doing a quick nut and bolt check on everything in the back then we're gonna do a brake bleed just for the hell of it while the wheels are off and uh, get ready for this next session was actually gonna be pretty cool we're gonna go in line with two other v10 cars I'm gonna be on the left in the middle is gonna be a Lexus LFA and then there's gonna be a Lamborghini on the other side all v10 engines uh, we're gonna start off in the start line on a main straight and kind of time variations so the first car will go I think 20 seconds, the LFA will go, I think another 15 seconds, and then I'm gonna go. And they're hopefully all gonna meet up on the main straightaway together to come down singing V10 songs. Crazy is this other fine American gentleman out here now having a crack with this fantastic um, Judd V10 powered super, the Formula Super Super from Ryan Tuick, and uh, joining me on the microphone, my good pal Warren Sayre. 
and uh, was. We don't have to do much talking during this session. Well, I think we got stopped last time, Doug. Yeah, there, was well, too, there was too much big digs in G. Well, let's just let's just let the Judd V10 energy take us through the rest of these laps here. For all those people watching, not only here but around the world, let's cop some V10 lungs right now, shall we? I've got tears in my eyes. I don't yeah, know why I've got, got tears, tears in my eyes. eyes. But, but why can something sound like that? And we all acknowledge that as going, dude, that sounds hot. Oh, I was trying to work it. I, I, I don't even think you can paraphrase into what it's for people who aren't actually no, here. That's crazy. It's hard to actually try and equate it to any sound in the world. It's completely unlike anything else we've ever had here at World Time Attack. Ryan Turek's machine is an absolute masterpiece. I'm a big fan of 10,000 RPM. You should be too. <laughs> you did that just to prove a point. Yes, right? just to... yes I did. <laughs> I do know that he's running. He is running a transponder uh, on the car, so I do know that he, he's out there trying to actually improve on his own records out there, and I think he did put it in for a 33.572. So there we go. So there's our live time on that, minute 33.572. So out of those two flying laps that we just, well, seen, heard, experienced, embodied, out-of-body experiences for everyone here. Uh, that's, that's again, as I say, that's a price of admission car to me. All right, boys, they're doing some roll racing out here right now. Roll racing, right? Flying 500. Is that what they're calling them? Yeah, flying okay. 500. Flying 500, here we go. What 
What's up guys? We didn't do a wrap up on a day yesterday, but there is some stuff to talk about. So we did better our lap by 0.8 hundredths. So almost a full second, which I'm freaking pumped on. So that means I'm getting a little more comfortable around the track and able to carry more speed in and out of some of the turns and then drive deeper into the braking zones. We also changed the setup a tiny bit. We did maximum attack on our wing. We changed some of the clicker adjustments and compression and rebound on the BC Racing shocks. Today we're gonna do some big changes because we kind of noticed the car is kind of bumping a lot, just kind of moving around the rear is sagging too much. We think there's a lot of downforce just kind of compressing the springs, especially on the straightaways. So we're gonna put the front sway bar on to help stabilize the thing in the turns. We're gonna bump the compression up a little bit on the rear shocks. And then we're also gonna raise uh, the rear shocks a little bit just to give us rake. Seems like it's squatting a little bit to the point where the rear is lower than the front end. That's the setup for today. We're hoping we can bust into shit. I mean, I think we can bust into the 132s, but it'd be nice if we can go even further than that. If we really nail the setup and the car is really, really comfortable to drive and, and better in and out of the turns then there's no reason why we can't yeah it's the last day the biggest day game day is gonna be like 35,000 people here which is, sounds freaking crazy cars are just getting staged up now to go and uh it's on baby let's do this you see that dude my left arm we'll do all left arm <laughs> the man hey the guys man. welcome from sydney australia let's go baby so this is ian he is the man owner does everything that has to do with World Time Attack and uh, the one who brought us all out here and makes this absolutely epic shit happen. So, thank you, Ian. Like, what pleasure. You guys <laughs> are the show, man. <laughs> This fantastic Formula Supra beast. Here we go. We're just going to let this go. Let's let, let, let it, it breathe. Let, let it breathe, Biggles. Let Here it we breathe. go. Let it breathe. Let it breathe. two-time champion back here at World Time Attack, Tarzan Yamada. It's amazing to see him back here and... Uh Good Jer morning. Hello, Jared Dando. Welcome yeah. into the commentary box. Good oh to see God. you uh, bright and shiny this morning. Yeah, man. Thank you. I don't know about shiny. A little, uh, a little yeah, summer glow. Yeah, summer, summer glow, glow, baby. How sweet does this vehicle sound? I mean, if you're not in the building and you're watching online, you have to see the Formula Supra in person, or better yet, hear it, right? I mean, this car yes. is just so phenomenal. He had a little bit of trouble yesterday, but Ryan Turk is a great friend of mine. I officiate his wedding, him and his lovely wife Shannon, his son Roman at home there watching uh, back in New Hampshire. Live free or die, that is the motto of the state of New Hampshire. I don't know if you know that. I, I've heard you say it once or twice. I have yeah, you say it once or twice. Well, uh, but Ryan Turk and the Formula Supra, now this is, this is a brainchild of his that he's had for many years, and I, I hear you guys doting on the vehicle. It really kind of kick-started with a GT4586. He took a Ferrari 458 engine and put it in the, the, the vehicle that is the 86, Toyota 86. I don't know if, have you seen that vehicle? 
Yes, I had that, that, yes. I mean, that was really cool, yep, right? Very cool. So that really kind of kickstarted his ideology of like doing something super unique. So this Judd V10 developed uh, many moons ago and kind of shoehorned it in there. And also he's got this uh, 3S GTE Toyota Stout, which is the first Toyota truck that ever came to the States. <laughs> This wing, this is the second wing he's gone right. through. One actually, it's it's RS, and basically uh, it created so much downforce it pushed on his trunk and it actually snapped. So just fun random facts. So, I love it. I love it. <laughs> now, so, so, something that is a bit of a feature of Ryan's car is the race service. And I, mm -hmm. I, know, I know you know a little bit about yeah. this too. It's always good to talk about the workshops that are involved as well. So yeah, tell me a little bit about race service as well. And Ryan's obviously got a bit of a program with Mobile One and Rockstar yeah. as well. Yeah, Ryan Turk is a Toyota Toyota supported Nitto tire, Rockstar energy drink driver. This vehicle heavily funded by Mobile One. It's a great partner of his. Race service is what you call an automotive hub. Uh, great friends of mine, uh, Jacob Agajanian, James Kirkham, Andy Lapuka. Sam Nalvin, you know, just uh, an absolutely stacked team. Ornamental Conifer is a creative director. Um, they are an automotive hub. They're doing a lot of F1 content. They're working with different drivers like Charles Leclerc, Daniel Ricciardo. Um, that's basically an automotive agency. So they, they do a lot of cool creative stuff. So even as simple as the graphics are, they are curated. That, that kind of blue signature, tonal, monochromatic stripe to even just the yellow details. You'll see his, his race suit, uh, you know, mimics this kind of lack of livery or therefore little little kind of subtle livery that was that was what you said to me as well too because you said to me come with, come with me i'll show you the car because you do need to go and look yeah. at it and appreciate it and it is this down there in the pit garages mm -hmm. and they are pretty good about letting you have access to it within reason now i guess we throw in the health and safety warning at this point if you've got children with yeah. you keep your fingers out of anything that they shouldn't be <laughs> if you're if you're a big child who likes touching things Don't. i wouldn't suggest running rings over no. some of the carbon and kevlar that's floating around the pits here at world time attack but I would head down there and I would have a look at that car and I would have your phone out and take photos because it, yeah. it is a memory you want to have going away from World Time Attack. Crazy, doing a pit walk. There are like uh, thousands of people down here, which is pretty cool. Speaking about awesome things, I'm just looking up onto the big screen now. Our friend Ryan Turk is out there in that awesome Super. You can just start to hear it there in the background. This car, if you haven't seen this car online before, if you haven't been watching so far today on the online, this car has got one of the best engine notes. It's sort of when people talk about how Formula One cars have lost their sound, this is exactly what a this is, a Formula, this is what a Formula One car was sort of 10 years ago. Yep. It is probably one of the most hyped cars online, and with good reason. Totally. I, I, if you've ever been to the Australian Grand Prix uh, in years previous, the walk to the track uh, for us drivers back in the day was 7am and listening to the two-seater F1 car wake up the streets and this feels exactly like that, but we're waking up Sydney this time. Much, much, much nicer city. It certainly is. But anyway, we're getting ready to watch Ryan Turk out there put this awesome Supra through, the, through its paces. Deagles, I hope you're up there in the commentary box because, mate, I know you love this car and I know you're a massive fan of it. So, mate, you can uh, have a bit of a chat about what is, I think, your favourite car here this weekend. Just taking a quick spell. He's gone for a bit of a walk. You've got Tony B up in the tower. Thank you, Luffy. Thank you, Josh, for those words. And the Formula Supra is on track. Ryan Turk... This thing, V10 power, 11,000 RPM as it rolls down the front straight. It's a huge car. 11,000. 
1,000 RPM as it roars down the front straight at Sydney Motorsport Park. Welcome back, Diggles. Yes, I, I had to just duck out for a quick moment. It's been a wee few uh, hours since I've managed to... Um, just go and have a bit of a debrief, but now I'm all good. And uh, look, to tell you what, no better, mm. no better sound in the uh, the Australian wilderness than a bit of G10, uh, a bit of V10 Judd in its natural habitat, a racetrack. So you know what? I think we're just going to let this breathe yes. for a bit. Let's get the ears on, folks. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, as he's coming around, everyone on the main straight, turn your uh, turn your phone torches on, and if we can get him down the main straight one more time, you, that, that, you know, we're going to give him a clap, cheer and whistle and wave our phones in the air and try and see if we can get his attention in there, just to let him know how much we appreciate him being here. What do you think? Uh, look, I think he's certainly got his own attention coming onto the front straight there, over the dirt, keeping it absolutely pinned. It looks like he had the front wheels in the air. Check this action replay from Olens. Here we go. Runs it wide. Keeps it buried. That's front wheels in the air for sure. Oh, Ryan, that is uh, that's full commitment. You know, when you go uh, when you go in, you go all in, and uh, that was fantastic. I think he might be gearing up for another little go. All systems check, but folks, if we can light up uh, light up a few phones and get his attention on the way down the main straight, let's see if we can get Ryan Turek's attention just as an appreciation, or well, at least when he's coming into the uh, into the pits if he does this time. I don't think he's ready to come into the pits though, Tony B. Nah, let him let him get out there, let him uh, warm the track for the shootout coming up, but we are getting the full theatrics of Sydney Motorsport Park this evening. We're seeing flames shooting out the exhaust, we're seeing a bit of uh, sparks coming off the diffuser. Uh, this is what nighttime time attack style racing is all about, the theatrics of a well-lit racetrack. And you know what, he'd be, uh, he's the sort of perfectionist where he might, you know, considering how much um, thrashing that thing mm. took out of that turn, I wouldn't be surprised he's the sort of guy that would want to come and have a look at all that. I mean, it's a pride and joy thing. Um, and, you know, it's as much about, you know, come on, ladies and gentlemen, give him a clap, cheer and a whistle. Give him a round of applause. I hope he can hear you. Just keep making noise for this car because he's made enough noise for you. What's going on, guys? I realized I actually never did a wrap-up outro at Sydney Motorsports Park, so we're back here in the States, and I just have to say that it was such an amazing experience being there. So many awesome people and fans and drivers and teams that we got to meet, and it's just amazing times on track. I mean, as you could see from a lot of the in-car video, I made a lot of mistakes, and, and I was getting a little bit more comfortable each time. Had a lot of, I guess, eagerness with the downshifts coming into the braking zones, so a lot of things that I can clean up in the future, and you know, I hadn't driven that car in a year and it just takes time to get used to a different discipline all over again. But we were able to better our time once again. So we actually finished the weekend with a 132. 0.45, I believe. Pretty happy about that. We we didn't really have anywhere else to go. We needed a different sway bar to put on the front end and a different sway bar for the rear, which we didn't have. So we're pretty much out of parts for setup and that's uh, the best we're gonna do. I maybe would be able to squeak maybe another half second better out of getting more comfortable on track, but um, that's what we walked away with. Overall, just such a great experience and big thank you to Ian and Alan over there at World Time Attack for bringing us over and big thanks to the boys that came onto the team and helped us all weekend we couldn't have finished the weekend without you guys and um just overall blast and hopefully get to go back next year